century, this giant beast has rampaged through the plains of our imagination. But today, new fossils raise a heretical question. Was T-Rex just a Mesozoic garbage disposal? What other nasty shocks might science hold in store for our favorite villain, the legendary T-Rex? No dinosaur has held a more ferocious grip on the popular imagination than Tyrannosaurus rex. A celebrity of international renown, T-Rex is a universal symbol of rampant destruction and blood-chilling terror. Professor, there's a big lizard back here and he's heading this way. Now get aboard! Portrayed by Hollywood as insatiable and unstoppable, Tyrannosaurus has been cast as the ultimate predator. The all-time bestseller among dinosaurs, its teeth are for sale as plastic souvenirs. Welders create metal replicas of T-Rex to keep up with the public demand for its monster image. Famous for its nasty disposition, Rex stands guard at motels, ice cream parlors, and in public parks across the nation. The size of T-Rex is frightening. Three times the height of a man, it weighed up to seven tons. Its powerfully muscled jaw was filled with jagged, nine-inch teeth. But most frightening of all, this gigantic animal was a flesh-eater, the largest carnivorous dinosaur ever to stalk the earth. The presence of T-Rex in museums all over the world suggests an abundance of fossils. But in fact, most Tyrannosaurus on display are only models, cast from the few real fossils in existence. Although T-Rex roamed the earth for two million years, until recently, its reputation was founded on only nine incomplete specimens. All were unearthed in the Badlands that stretched from Wyoming and Montana into South Dakota and Western Canada. When T-Rex first appeared 67 million years ago, a shallow inland sea bisected North America, preventing Tyrannosaurus from reaching the eastern part of the continent. The first T-Rex was the prize of legendary dinosaur hunter Barnum Brown, who discovered it in 1900, and Henry Fairfield Osborne, who named it. Both men worked for the American Museum of Natural History. At the time of T-Rex discovery, dinosaur fossils were already attracting huge crowds, for sheer size, nothing like them had ever been seen before. What the fossil record lacked, human imagination provided. This movie version of a battle between T-Rex and Triceratops spawned a monster of mythic proportions that would survive for most of this century. Today, Jack Horner, curator of paleontology at the Museum of the Rockies in Bozeman, Montana, is one of a new breed of scientists questioning traditional ideas about dinosaurs. His suspicions that T-Rex might be an imposter began early in 1990, when a woman named Kathy Wunkel brought him an arm bone she found in Macomb County, eastern Montana.
Horner began excavating what would become the most complete T-Rex on record. Buried for 65 million years, the huge fossils required earth-moving equipment to take them out of the ground. T-Rex was once seen as a lumbering, tail-dragging beast. The new version could chase its prey at speeds up to 30 miles an hour, much faster than a human running at top speed. But Horner was not convinced T-Rex deserved its reputation as history's most awesome predator. When Tyrannosaurus Rex was first found, um, Barnum Brown brought the specimen in. Um, Henry Fairfield Osborne was the first person to work on it, certainly the first one to describe it. And he gave it the name Tyrannosaurus Rex, which means Tyrant Lizard King. Well, and pretty much said it was a predator, but he didn't base that on anything. I mean, there was, he didn't really do the work necessary to determine that it was. He just pretty much said it was. It was a big carnivorous animal, the largest one ever found, and the assumption was that it was a predator. That assumption inspired the quintessential image of T-Rex as a hunter and a killer. But what Horner saw was an overgrown scavenger, a gigantic vulture preying on dead carcasses. He admits his view of T-Rex is not a popular one. People don't want to hear that Tyrannosaurus was a scavenger. They want to, they want to know that it was a predator, because for some reason that's, that's really special. Much of T-Rex's reputation as a hunter is based on its huge size. But like a vulture, one of the largest carnivorous birds, T-Rex could have used its size to scare other scavengers away. Horner compares T-Rex with a group of predatory dinosaurs that includes Velociraptor, Trudon, and Deinonychus, all built for speed. If you're going to design a bipedal predator, you'd make a Velociraptor. They have a short femur, a short thigh bone, and a long tibia, or shin bone. And that gives them the leverage to run. That's why an ostrich can run faster than we can, even though we're about the same size. We have a femur and a tibia that are the same length. Tyrannosaurus rex also had a femur and a tibia that were the same length. For the first time, the prestige of T-Rex as a predator seemed to teeter on the brink of disaster. But soon another Tyrannosaurus rex, bigger and tougher, would take on the challenge. The lack of vegetation and the rapidly eroding sandstone on the arid badlands of South Dakota are ideal for searching out the bones of ancient creatures. Here, fossil collector Peter Larson of the Black Hills Institute has found the widely scattered remains of duck-billed dinosaurs, large plant-eating animals that were the favorite food of Tyrannosaurus rex. In 1990, Larson's team also found the largest T-Rex ever discovered. At their lab in Hill City, the team concluded that their new find was a female Tyrannosaur because it lacked an extra chevron bone found on T-Rex males. Larson believes the extra bone anchored the sex organ of the male T-Rex and allowed it to be retracted when not in use. In honor of the team member who discovered her, the new T-Rex was named Sue. Sue is slightly larger than the Museum of the Rockies specimen. Uh, not only is each bone a little bit longer, but each bone is actually bigger around, more meaty, more beefy, more robust uh, than the Museum of the Rockies specimen. Again, the popular image of the tyrant lizard king seemed in jeopardy. For in size, it appeared that the male T-Rex was no match for its tyrant lizard queen. It's really not unusual for females to be larger than male Tyrannosaurus because in many other species we see the same thing. We see it in, in, in most invertebrate species, in most fish species, most amphibians, many reptiles, and even some mammals where the female is larger than the male. 
and it's really only in those species in which males compete for the right to impregnate multiple females that we see the males become larger. Sue and her kind lived here from 67 to 65 million years ago, at the end of the age of the dinosaurs. Then the land was lush and full of life, according to senior dinosaur scientist at the Royal Tyrrell Museum in Canada, Phil Curry. In this part of the world, we would find that the habitats and the countryside would look a lot like the Gulf states or northern Florida does today. There was a diversity of environments along the rivers and so on, and there were wide open areas, and there was some uh, lowland marshes and so on, but they were, they were good places for the Tyrannosaurus to live. They could seek out food in a variety of habitats, and maybe some of those habitats favored them for hunting. Curry believes this habitat